Hey, Scott. Yeah, can you hear me? I can hear you. All right, yeah, it's coming in on the phone, which is kind of wonky, but uh, it is what it is, I suppose. <laughs> and we're going live on Amazon here in just a moment. Okay. So, all right. Okay, well, that's good. I wasn't live that whole time. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. We just we just went live right now. So we are here on Amazon Live. And uh, let's, uh, let's get... Oh, now your audio is gone again. I cannot hear you anymore. Well, I got you. Yeah, yep. So okay. here's the weird thing. Yeah, well, well, we'll just play around with this a little bit. There we go. All right. So uh, welcome to Amazon Live. We've got Melanie Dodaro here, and we're going to be talking about a couple of her books here. And we're doing this just a crazy way because uh, I had been editing video on my computer and a bunch of other things, and my video was a little choppy coming in. I thought, hey, I'm going to do the smart thing. I'm going to reboot my computer. <laughs> Go back into uh, StreamYard so we can broadcast here on Amazon. And it won't recognize any audio. Nothing out, nothing in, not the built in stuff, not the uh, plugins that I've got, nothing. So, oh. what do you do? You pick up your phone <laughs> and you broadcast. And there it is. Well, anyway. Sometimes old school technology works best <laughs> every <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> Well, Melanie, welcome. And with that, uh, we met way back in 2016 in Dublin, Ireland, in Dublin, Ireland, and that was at the Social Media Summit where uh, we were both speaking, and you were, as you are today, sharing deep knowledge about LinkedIn. And we actually technically met at the Guinness Storehouse. <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. Yeah. That was... Just kidding. <laughs> All right. So uh, the sequence out. We met at that. We actually poured a couple of perfect pints there at the storehouse in Dublin, and I highly recommend that for people. Well, with that, uh, Melanie, let's get an overview because you've written a number of books on LinkedIn. You are uh, the the founder of Top Dog Social, uh, social media, you have, and in your book, I'll say, by the way, uh, it's the who's who of digital media for all the people who wrote just wonderful words about your books. And so uh, let, let's get in and let's find out who is Melanie. And we're separated by a handful of time zones. So let people <laughs> know where in the world you are. And let's we'll start right there. Yeah, I'm, I live in Europe now. I live in the Netherlands, originally from Canada. Uh, and just, um, yeah, it was in two, so was 2017, I decided to make the jump over the pond. <laughs> and it's been fantastic, different lifestyle, different uh, experience. Unfortunately, COVID through a couple of years of, you know, not able to really th thoroughly enjoy it and travel, but uh, we're back to normal life again. So it's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. And uh, why, why the Netherlands? Well, I started off in Spain and my plan was I wanted palm trees, the ocean and warm weather. Uh, and I lived there for seven months and mm -hmm. decided that uh, I wanted to move to the Netherlands. Um, I have family here, and so it just felt like a, a better move. Moving to Europe is, you know, a really big move, and it's mm -hmm. a little overwhelming. And so it was nice to have a little bit of family support and, you know, people that, uh, you know, just it, it just made a difference. So it was um, made the transition a little bit easier. Right. Yeah. 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 And let's let's jump right into LinkedIn because. Okay. Um, one of the things is, I will say it is unfairly lumped into the category of social media, because when we think of social media, it's uh, pictures of my food, cat videos, I don't know, just, um, uh, just it's very different than what LinkedIn is. I, I think it's like, it'd be like saying a trade show is a cocktail party. 
Yeah. So let's get a little bit of an overview of your perspective of LinkedIn. Well, it's interesting because, you know, everything that you just said has been true for the longest time. Um, LinkedIn was very different. It's a professional social network. And, you know, it certainly did fall into the category of social media, but people approached it differently. People saw it differently. And in fact, one of the things I find really interesting, and I kind of pull uh, my community on LinkedIn every once in a while, and more than 50% of the people that I'm connected to on LinkedIn do not use other social media platforms. So mm -hmm. it's like um, a lot of the people that had gravitated to LinkedIn just weren't interested in the whole social media space. But that's really changed over the last few years where I saw a major exodus, if you will, from like places like Facebook over to LinkedIn. And it's interesting because for a couple of years, LinkedIn started to get very Facebook-ish, mm -hmm. um, where people were posting those kind of things. And LinkedIn themselves actually recently came out with their new algorithm and basically said they're looking to reestablish that more professional nature. Um, they're looking to um, have posts that are going to really add value and educate. And one of the things that they uh, also stated is that they want people to stay in their lane. Meaning if your profile and your presence is about a certain topic and you're talking about something completely different, like what you have for lunch, for example, okay. um, LinkedIn's going to diminish that in the in the visibility of the news feed. So it's interesting to kind of watch how that's happening. There's a lot of um, changes and LinkedIn tends to make changes and test things out and see how it works. And maybe we'll change their mind two weeks later. Who knows? <laughs> we'll see what happens. But I welcome that change because uh, it was becoming a little bit too Facebook like. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully that's going to change now. Yeah, I, I I agree. I I love in your book that you talk about uh, the kind of the origin of LinkedIn, where uh, people, including myself, said, "Well, this is where I put my digital resume," and that was really all that it was. And that was I don't know how many years ago uh, when I first got involved in it, probably two thousand five or two thousand seven, probably somewhere around there. Uh, usually, you can look back and go, "When was I looking for a job?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> might be the time when you you first got involved in LinkedIn, but it really wasn't that way from the beginning. No, uh, and it's certainly not that way now. If you're savvy about how you're using this particular tool, well, and you know, you just brought up a really good point: is everybody's going to use the tool differently based on what is their individual needs or goals or objectives. So certainly if you are looking for a job, it's a fantastic platform to do that. If you are in sales, it's also a fantastic platform to uh, build relationships, prospect. If you're in marketing, it's a great place to you know, share your message. And if you're a professional that wants to build a, a professional network, uh, it's fantastic for that too. And, you know, I actually had a conversation on LinkedIn recently where I said, you know, you don't have to do the things that everybody's saying that you have to do. You do what is right for you. Mm -hmm. And somebody brought up a point that said, you know, the thing is, is that people don't ever know when they're going to actually need LinkedIn. So it never hurts to build that network so that you have that to fall back on. Should you ever decide to change businesses, find a new job, whatever the situation might be for you, you know, there, there's never any um, downside to growing a, a strong network and having a strong personal presence. Mm -hmm. And this is interesting because there's a number of things that I think people can use it for. So uh, we've got a couple of books with uh, here. We've got uh, LinkedIn for sales plus the uh, unlocked LinkedIn unlocked. But a, a lot of this might be business to business sales, right? Where I'm looking, I sell something and I'm looking for other businesses to partner with. They have needs, I have solutions, or I'm looking for something. And so I'm out there. Uh, yeah. It could be you're looking for a job, just a raw job. Uh, and I'll say the other thing is, is that you're looking to enhance yourself in your current job. So you might be working for a Fortune 500 company, 
uh, uh, individual contributor, middle manager, senior manager, but you're looking at improving yourself. And I think one of the things that I found in your book is, is that this is another great tool for that as well. There's reasons why, and you list them out pretty clearly, I, I think actually, is why are people on LinkedIn? Yeah, like what I just said, there's all these different goals and objectives based on what anybody's individual goals are. And one of the things that uh, came up in this conversation that I was having with somebody is years ago, a professor from a university in the United States reached out to me. He said, you know, Melanie, I'm really trying to get the other faculty in the university to embrace LinkedIn, spend time on there, be on there. And I said to him, I said, well, you know, that's great that you think that they should be on there. But if they don't have a goal and objective to, to mm -hmm. do it in their particular field, you know, they, they've got this job that's going to be their job for life. They've got a lot of job security. <laughs> right. And so the ones that are thinking about writing a book, the ones that are thinking about maybe doing some speaking engagements, they have a goal and objective. But the ones who are like, this is just what I'm going to do. This is my job. I go to work and then I go home and I'm not interested in communicating with anybody after hours. And that's it it's okay for them not to be on LinkedIn. Nobody needs to do anything unless it's going to serve right. you. You know, yeah. the example uh, that somebody then brought to the table was, well, what if, it, what if their situation changes? And that, that is undeniable. That's something that, you know, uh, if you don't have a job that you know you can count on forever, uh, you, when you need a, a network and when you need a LinkedIn presence, at the last minute, it's not going to work. <laughs> it takes a while to build up. Right. Yeah. And and this is what I like about your book too. Is is that um, it's not just for advanced users and it's not just for beginners. Uh, but you'll have some things like how to make your picture public, um, your your uh, headshot or whatever. But uh, and then there's deep strategies and and you mentioned that that. LinkedIn will change and all the all the platforms out there are going to change. The button that used to be here is now over here. The menu is different colors, whatever it is. Uh, but the strategies and tactics in your book are really timeless. So if LinkedIn went away, you could take these direct strategies and apply them to whatever is available. True enough. Although I think LinkedIn's probably got the most longevity out of any platform, personally. <laughs> but you know, you also bring up a great point. So I published two books at the exact same time, which was an insane, crazy thing to do. Yeah. But it was a necessary thing to do because uh, when I published the first edition of LinkedIn Unlocked in 2018, uh, I had somebody reach out to me. He read my book. He ended up becoming the co-author of my second book here that I just recently published. He reached out to me. He said, I really loved your book, Melanie, but it would be great if you wrote one that was specific to sales professionals. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, because there is a different strategy for them. And also they're using Sales Navigator and they're getting much more advanced into some of the strategic uh, aspects of the platform and tactics, of course. And I thought if I would have published them separately, even a week or two weeks separately, everybody that bought LinkedIn Unlocked the last time around would have then reached, then would, would have then went and bought navigating LinkedIn for sales, which is not for them. And vice versa, right? The sales professionals would have bought LinkedIn Unlocked and that one wasn't for them. So I was like, okay, if I'm going to do this, I need to make sure that people get the right book for them because the strategies and tactics are different depending mm -hmm. on what your goal and objective is. LinkedIn Unlocked is more uh, broad for business owners, for entrepreneurs, for professional service providers, uh, professionals of all kind, really. But if your sales is your core um, role or business development, then the other book is certainly geared specifically for you. And uh, yeah, I don't think that I'll ever do that again, two books at the same time. <laughs> but I felt it was necessary. <laughs> well, we've got the, we've got, uh, the books highlighted in the carousel. In fact, uh, LinkedIn for sales, I've got it highlighted right there. And for LinkedIn for sales, do you recommend the paid version that is uh, of LinkedIn? 
because well, the, there's yeah. a lot of free things, but what about the paid version? Yeah, so navigating LinkedIn for sales is uh, really geared around Sales Navigator. Um, there, you know, I do talk a little bit about you know what's available, what's available that they can actually achieve in the free version of LinkedIn. But the problem is, is if your role is in sales, LinkedIn has added so many restrictions to being mm -hmm. able. To uh, do searches, for example. So if you're prospecting, you're searching for people. Well, within a week, maybe even days uh, of the beginning of the month, LinkedIn will say, you know, you've reached your limit. Now they've recently, and who knows if this is going to last, they've rolled out uh, their latest test pilot, uh, which is that LinkedIn is going to limit personalized invites to only 10 per month for free users. So they've basically taken away the ability for sales professionals to really use LinkedIn effectively as a social selling tool, unless you're using uh, a paid subscription. And the difference between LinkedIn premium and sales navigator is exponential in terms of the benefits uh, of the latter. Um, for sales professionals. So, you know, again, going back to the other book, if you're just, uh, you know, uh, somebody who's using LinkedIn for any other goal and objective other than sales, you might, you'll you certainly can get by with a free account and uh, certainly also with a premium account if you're interested in some of the additional features, which are seeing everybody that's viewed your profile and, you know, some, some additional things that aren't available with a free account, but there's not a lot. There's not a big difference between a free account and LinkedIn premium, but there's a vast difference between uh, free and sales navigator exponentially. Mm -hmm. So definitely, if you're a sales, if you're in sales, and we know that that that's all about the numbers, right? How many contacts did you make? How how did you reach? How much did you reach out? And uh, I think there's this image that that uh, salespeople specifically are all these extroverts. And uh, but in your book, you also uh, note that you are yourself not an extrovert. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, the, the interesting part about that uh, is that I was talking about in the content section about the different ways of sharing content on LinkedIn to staying visible, uh, building authority, and all the different things that you can do through sharing content. And then, of course, the conversation has to go to video, live video. And uh, in it, I said, you know, listen, as an introvert, I prefer the written word, I like to write, I don't really like video. And I wrote in the book, at the time of writing, I have not done a LinkedIn Live. And the funny thing is, is the day after uh, the book launch, my co-author and I did a LinkedIn Live. So I'm like, oh my gosh, the book's only been out for like a day. And <laughs> now I'm doing my first LinkedIn Live after just writing, I haven't done a LinkedIn Live. So now we're on Amazon Live as well. <laughs> And we're also being pushed into into LinkedIn as well right now. So that's uh, so you're there again on, link, <laughs> on LinkedIn Live. But um, well, and so the point to uh, get, get, getting back to the point is, yeah, introverts, introverts don't like live video. Right. Uh, you know, it's it's not our thing. It doesn't mean that we're not capable of it. Uh, right. It's just not our thing. And so one of the things that I said in the book is work to your strengths. Don't feel like somebody has said, oh, when you're on LinkedIn, you need to do X, Y, and Z. And this is how mm -hmm. it is. It's not true. You need to do what works for you. Now, if working for you is invisible and you're expecting results, well, I'm sorry, that's not going to happen, right? Um, but if, you know, you're an introvert and you're not interested in posting videos, creating videos, doing live videos and all these different things, but you're great at writing, which most introverts, you know, have a deeper uh, introspective personality where they're, mm -hmm. they enjoy the written word more so. So go with your strengths, you know? Sure. Yeah. And uh, LinkedIn gives a, a number of tools. So we've got the free, we've got paid version, you've got the navigator. Uh, I have a friend that uses the, the navigator. Uh, for his business, he sells a physical product. He's in, uh, I don't know, 3,000 stores across the country, Home Depot and Lowe's and whatnot. Um, but he's looking for supply houses mm -hmm. and uh, being able to connect up with the with the um, right folks. Definitely, LinkedIn, this is the place to go. 
yeah. because and they're Navig there. And Sales Navigator lets you get so um, hyper targeted on you know geography, company size, number of employees, position, titles. Uh, you name it, you can find it. And one of the best features in Sales Navigator, well, there's lots, but one of the best ones is a spotlight filter, which allows you to see, okay, you have all your different criteria set up. So industry, uh, company size, you can even do company revenue, you know, uh, geography, all these different things. And then, okay, now I have all this. Plus, I just want to see the people that have posted in the last 30 days. Or I want to see people who have changed jobs in the last 90 days or people that have been mentioned in the news. And these are all great conversation starters to reach out to somebody in an authentic and uh, natural kind of way. You know, most people, when they think about LinkedIn and sales, they think, oh, my gosh, yeah, you connect with somebody and immediately you get a sales pitch. And, and nobody wants that. Right, right. And in fact, it does not work. And I mm -hmm. Very extensively in my books about that that does not work, you know. Uh, and then we now we have AI, and AI, in my opinion, has created a whole another set of problems, unbelievable opportunities. And right. in fact, there's never been a better time to be in sales or marketing. However, you know, I can spot AI a mile away. Uh, it's so evident. Everybody is looking the same. There is so much sameness. And, you know, there's also talk about these AI detectors. And, like, the big, the greatest AI detector in the world is the human mind. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's a fantastic tool and I encourage the use of it, but the strategic use of it. And, you mm -hmm. know, I, I actually also talk in my book, the, the power of using AI is in the editing. That's where the, the power comes from, right? It's adding that humanity to it, adding that human touch. And the other thing is, you know, always speak, always writing rather, as you would speak, whether it's in a LinkedIn message or whether it's in a post, if you wouldn't say it in public in front of somebody right and don't write it and right. people are just confused you know and the, the reason mm -hmm. they make mistakes is simply because they don't know better um they for some reason forget all of their fantastic communication skills that they have face to face that they don't realize that it's exactly the same online right yeah and that's uh that's exactly it in fact uh when we met uh, over in Ireland, uh, the talk that I gave was the psychology and physiology of relationships. And uh, one of the reasons I, I picked that was that I saw that a lot of businesses uh, did not treat their customers or potential customers the same online as they would if they were in person. Yeah. And and I said, well, that's that was wrong. Uh, the other thing that I did, and this is just a side note in that, was I took the academic research and proved that the relationships that we create digitally can be just as strong as those that we create face to face. And of course, we went through a global laboratory yes. uh, that proved that to be true. And those people who had been reading uh, your book, uh, the first one when it first your first edition when it came out, and were building their profile when that lockdown came down came out. And you could no longer go to physical networking events. You couldn't go to trade shows. You couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't. Uh, what did they turn to? Yeah. They turned to online. And the people who had been doing the work were light years ahead of everyone else. This is, uh, Melanie, this is one of the things I really love about your work. Again, it's it's not just specific to LinkedIn, although it's, perfect for, you know, it is a LinkedIn book, but the strategies and the tactics there are human to human. Yes. Human to human, hu human to human and transferable. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And, uh, and so you, you, you give an overview of, uh, and I'm just back jumping back into the LinkedIn unlocked. Uh, you give an overview of LinkedIn We talk about some strategies uh, and you give an implementation. One of the things that I loved about your book, and uh, you know, I got the digital version because I like to take things with me and be able to read them wherever I go. 
But I think this book is really good for the paper version because you have uh, checklists, uh, you have exercises. Let's talk about some of the practical things because yeah, it's great. We look at the theory and you know, you know, connect to people and build, be authentic. And I mean, that's all great stuff. But then, what do you actually do? How do I actually take these great concepts and make them real? Yeah, exactly. And you know, it's so when I'm working with individuals or companies and I'm training them on social selling on LinkedIn. Um, back in the day when I first started out, companies would reach out to me or individuals would reach out to me and ask for training. And I would deliver training. But I would realize that at the end of these trainings, no matter how great I felt I had put together the training, they were still not equipped. Mm. And it's because they needed more, right? So they needed uh, some hand-holding, some action plans, some uh, coaching. And so, you know, there's only so much you can do in a book, but what I really thought about in the book is, okay, well, what are the steps, the specific steps that they need to take in each section of the book? So every single chapter ends with an action plan. It's here are the three things or the five things that you can do right now. And if you do that, if you're implementing things in incremental steps, little by little, instead of like reading an entire book and being like, okay, here is this massive to-do list and checklist, it's too much. So a little bit at a time, okay, we're talking about this, let's do this. We're talking about this, let's do this now. And every chapter is just a specific topic, right? It's not, it's, I think I did a, a pretty good job of, you know, laying it out in an incremental it's way. Very logical. It's very logical, it's very logical, yeah. Which I appreciate, by the way. <laughs> So I think that that's the key. The key is implementation, right? Mm -hmm. And I know for me, if I'm confused about something, I go into inaction. And so I really try to uh, ensure that there's as little confusion as possible that can be achieved in a book, of course, and a, a specific action plan. Because I, you know, I read a lot of really good books and I'm like, oh, this is really great. And it inspires ideas and I have, uh, you like I'm totally inspired by the book, but I'm like, but I don't know what to do with it. What is my action steps, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Cameron Harold that uh, uh, wrote the book Double Double, and yep. he was uh, the 1-800 uh, got junk guy, mm -hmm. right? And uh, I remember I was at an event and he was speaking and we were all given copies of his book. And he's so funny because he said, you know, he holds it up and he says, uh, whatever you do, don't read my book. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, because, you know, uh, he goes, unless you're going to do something, because here's the deal. Look at your back shelf. Look at all the business books that you purchased and maybe even read, but haven't implemented anything in them. Yeah. So he goes, if that's what you're going to do with my book, then don't read it. He goes, yeah. except maybe chapter seven. <laughs> 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 because that one's pretty good. But uh, and, and that's what I like about your book, again, that it's not just this um, theory and concepts and, oh, yeah, that's really good. Oh, I didn't know that. And and I want to talk about some of the, I won't call them hidden features, but I'll call them hidden features because uh, you do unlock some stuff. Uh, but it's the practical. It's those. It's the checklist. It's your, how, how much do you know about LinkedIn? And it turns out I don't know very much. And what are, you know, what are the priorities for a business? What are these things that I need to do uh, to actually be effective? And before I jump into to, for the paid version, I better be taking advantage of all the free stuff. Yeah. So let's the, talk about some of those things. That you don't need the paid version either, depending on what your goals are. Yeah. And let's talk, but let's talk about some of those things that, uh, and I'll just throw out one of them that if you're using LinkedIn on your phone, you can leave a voice message when you're mm -hmm. talking to somebody. Mm -hmm. um, that's a pretty cool feature. Yeah, it is. And I think I also caution people not to use that too soon because uh, if there's been no dialogue between you and mm -hmm. uh, especially if you're you know, trying to approach them from some kind of business standpoint, it's too much too soon. So uh, it's a great feature after there's been you know, at least one or two dialogues between you. 
Uh, and then it's fantastic because it allows people to hear your voice, uh, get to know you better. Uh, same thing with video, obviously. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, it is it, it is a fantastic feature, and um, you know, just not used too quickly or too soon. <laughs> Smart. Okay, that's good. So um, here's a tool, but again, use it appropriately. As they say, every uh, strength used to an excess is a weakness. So. Well, you know, and I've been giving a lot of thoughts to this over the last day. And, you know, I've always said this. As soon as marketers um, grab a hold of something, mm -hmm. they, they end up destroying it because it's, they overuse things. And I'm starting to see this a lot on LinkedIn. And I'm starting to see a lot of the posts looking exactly the same. Um you know, people, somebody has said, oh, share your, you know, hard luck story. <laughs> right. You know, all the difficult times you've gone through and everybody's sharing them exactly the same way. Everybody's doing everything exactly the same way. And now mm -hmm. people are just scrolling by and it's not having an impact. And so anything overused tends to stop working. Right. And one of the things that uh, I think is really important is, to not necessarily follow what everybody's saying you should be doing. Right. The other thing that's important about that, and, and content is a big one right now, where everyone's like, oh, you gotta share content, you gotta share content. And in, in LinkedIn Unlocked, I don't think I say this in Navigating LinkedIn for Sales, but I, I say, I believe it's in chapter seven, where I say, you know, every social selling experts out there that uh, saying that you have to share content, the secret to LinkedIn is sharing content. And I, wrote, I disagree. Content sharing is important to stay top of mind and visible with the network mm -hmm. that you're building. But content sharing alone is not going to pro provide any kind of predictable stream of business because you're completely reliant upon LinkedIn's algorithm. You're completely reliant upon whether people are scrolling through the newsfeed and whether it's going to capture mm -hmm. their attention. And even if your post captures their attention, if you've created a post just for the sake of creating a post and doesn't, it doesn't inspire any action, well, what is the goal and objective? And so one of the things I talk about in every single action that you take on LinkedIn, whether it's a LinkedIn post, and by the way, LinkedIn posts can have a multitude of different goals, but only one per post. Okay. When you send messages to people, only one goal per message. I'll give you an example. Look at the last five connection requests that you received that were personalized. Mm -hmm. Guaranteed. In there, uh, the person has obviously sent the connection request, which the, the primary goal of a connection request, and actually the only goal of a connection request, should be to have that person that you're sending the connection request accept it. That is the goal of the connection request. However, you will see people try to uh, pitch their services, uh, provide a mini bio of themselves, uh, <laughs> ask you to go to their website, um, try to book a call. I mean, they'll try to do one, two, three, four, five different things in a single message. Right. It does not work. Yeah. One of the things that, that we're taught is active listening, right? Yeah. This is one of those one of those skills, and uh, just reading through your book, this is one of the things that came to mind, is that you're actually teaching us how to be active listeners by using LinkedIn. Yeah, and you know that's another fantastic point is instead of being so concerned about sharing posts that are going to maybe have people see them because LinkedIn's algorithm has shown them, um, if you see your target market sh sharing content or commenting on things, you know, replying to them and starting a conversation there, uh, where then you can transition that nicely to a one-to-one -one message, those are the kind of things that are gonna produce results. Right. Because I, I, you know, I picture it, you know, I picture LinkedIn and these connections and here's people that I don't know, but maybe I want to do business with them or maybe, uh, maybe they're a good resource or something, you know, I don't know, whatever you want to connect that just as like a networking event. 
And if I just walked up to a group of people and started spouting off, well, there's a new tool that's come in and it processes it 45% faster than this. And you're just is like, what, what, right? I mean, we wouldn't do that. And yet this is what we're seeing. And, but I think of things like, you know, if you posted a comment and you said, oh, I just, uh, I'm publishing two books at the same time and it's driving me crazy, but you know, here's the date that they're coming out. And so I see that post on there and by giving that like or celebrate or whatever the whatever the acknowledgement i want to do that's kind of like the head nod in in active listening oh i hear what you're saying right mm -hmm, you know and maybe uh, i'll restate something by adding a comment on there again this is just active listening so i'm just going oh melanie that must be crazy well at least you got a, a co-author on one book yeah right? <laughs> a fantastic right? co-author by the way <laughs> you know and so here we go now I started, you know, it's the same thing. I, I, I actively listened to what you said. I made eye contact by hitting the like button. Uh, I restated something and added a little bit of thing. Now you can, now you have the opportunity to respond back. And this is, and this is the beginning of a dialogue. Now, maybe we don't want to do it publicly. Maybe we want to do it on a, a private message. And I go, and then I might jump over there and I go, Hey, I just, you know, I wanted to ask you some questions and or you get some more information but i want it to be public to everybody i just wanted to jump in you know how do i learn more about where you're going to be speaking or uh how to do business with you or what you know get bulk uh volumes of your book and it just <laughs> right I, I want to give these to all my sales people because uh you know we need we need to, we need a competitive advantage this is what i see in your book right this mm -hmm. is that uh, and you start off really key again, relationships, right? It's not just blasting things out there. Well, and, you know, I love what, what you said, Scott, and you're masterful at this whole topic of active listening and networking. Um, you know, this is another concern that I have right now with AI use is people mm -hmm. are generating comments uh that are they're generating comments using ai with no thought no active listening they're just like it's reading the post and, and then re regurgitating exactly what that person just said oh so and it's you know it's so inauthentic and that is not going to be right. well in building relationships so you know let's not forget our humanity with all these amazing tools that we have at our disposal from ai to sales navigator to you know so many fantastic technology tools but let's not forget our humanity because it's that that's going to make a difference yeah and that's why i've never been a fan of the elevator pitch right yeah. uh my my phrase ditch the pitch yeah. and, <laughs> and it's and it and and, and because it sounds like an autoresponder, right? It's just, okay. there's no heart and soul. Uh, I don't know who you are. I'm just gonna, I've, I've written this thing, I've practiced it, I've rehearsed it, I've memorized it, I've wordsmithed the thing to death. And uh, it, like I said, there's no heart and no soul in this. It's like, have you ever gotten on a phone call with somebody who does sales and you like see every single thing is scripted? I actually mm -hmm. had a call with somebody. It was quite a long time ago now, but like, I'll never forget this particular call because they had a script and they would ask me a question and I would reply and say something. And then they would ask me the next question <laughs> where I just literally answered it. And I was, so I'm like, are you listening to anything I'm saying? And then I did the same thing two more times. I'm like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you might want to get rid of your script because you're not yeah. listening to a single word I'm saying. <laughs> like, it was ridiculous. It was like, I, oh, I had that very experience when I was working at Bank of America. And at the time, Bank of America was the fourth largest bank in the country. And the phone rings and I answered it. And the person on the other end says, uh, this is Joe from MCI. I'd like to talk to you about how we can save your small business money on long distance. <laughs> and I said, uh, when I answered the phone, I did give you my name and let you know that this is Bank of America. Bank of America is the fourth largest bank in the country. Man, he just kept following down the script. 
<laughs> and they said, you know, and it was like, and the MCI can save you a long distance. They said, oh, and by the way, uh, we use MCI for our long distance at the fourth largest bank in the country. <laughs> he was a locomotive going down the tracks and nothing was going to stop him from from following through on his script because he that's probably what he got uh, rewarded for. Yeah. And that's a whole different the management conversation. That's a whole different one. Yeah, <laughs> 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 one that I cannot tackle in any LinkedIn book, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, and and so uh, I just love the whole thought. Let's. I want to jump back to way at the beginning and say, uh, Melanie, how the heck did you ever get involved in being uh, the expert on LinkedIn? Oh. Yeah, interesting. So how I started my social media journey in, in general as an introvert who vowed I would never mm -hmm. be on social media. I had written a book way back and uh, I had just sold a business that I um, owned. And, you know, I, my business that I had, I was spending $800,000 a year on marketing. It did very well, but it was very marketing and advertising driven. Mm -hmm. And so when I sold it and I had written this book, I was like, oh, gosh, how do you promote a book? And so prior to that, I was playing a little bit with social media and kind of, you know, getting used to it a little bit. And anyways, I thought, oh, OK, this must be a good tool to <laughs> promote a book because it's a $20 book. Like, are you, gosh, you, you can't spend a whole bunch of money on marketing on a $20 book, not like the businesses that I had. And sure. so that's how the social media journey came. But I am an mm -hmm. introvert. And so I wasn't really uh, big on the whole uh, silliness and chattiness and whatnot, but I like deep, you know, one-to-one -one relationships. And uh, I also found, you know, I found that with Facebook too. I truly did. I, I created many friendships on Facebook. Um, but from a business perspective, I'm like, ah, oh, LinkedIn just feels right. Mm -hmm. And so I very quickly, very quickly just started focusing um, the majority of my attention on LinkedIn. The other thing is, is the businesses that I dealt with were 95% at the time, uh, now 100% uh, B2B. Well, mm -hmm. where you spend your time, right? And so uh, and the other thing I mentioned to you is that, you know, I've polled my my connections on LinkedIn and a very large percentage of them do not use Facebook or Twitter now X. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly do not use Instagram and Snapchat or TikTok, you know? Um, yeah. So, you, you know, LinkedIn is it and LinkedIn is it for the, the whole professional, um, you know, realm. So, uh, yeah, and the other thing that I realized is that there just wasn't very much information about LinkedIn. Everybody was talking about the fun social media tools, mm -hmm. platforms. Yeah. And I was like, you know, what's fun to me is achieving goals and objectives. That's what's fun to me. And mm -hmm. so I'm a little bit different. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love that. And this is the uh, this comes down to just the practical side of it. And um you know uh, i get all those things in my feed just like everyone else and uh how to make a million with uh, TikTok, and yeah. and i just look at that and um you know i i put it on my phone and then i unloaded it pretty quickly because um i really don't care if my attorney can dance to a song oh. right I certainly hope mine doesn't because I would lose instant respect. <laughs> right. You know, this is the this is the thing. I see these, I see professionals doing uh doing the latest challenge or whatever. And I go, but I would rather be I would rather see on LinkedIn that they wrote an article or um one of those hidden features is the LinkedIn newsletters and where they put some thought into it and they did some research. And I'm a solo entrepreneur. I work remotely. And if they did some things and wrote, you know, from a legal perspective, here's the things that you need to know about your business. Here's some, maybe from my accountant, it's going to go, here's some changes that are coming for the 2024 tax year that you want to know about. I'm much more interested in that 
than if they can do a line dance. Well, you know, Scott, I, I wouldn't say much more interested. I, I would literally say I would have absolutely no respect for right. <laughs> a yeah. professional service provider yeah. that I was paying um, that was doing silly TikTok videos, like instant, instant credibility mm -hmm. lost, respect lost. So, but that doesn't mean that it's not right for other people. I'm not, I, I'm just saying that the people that I would want to do business with, I would not consider doing yeah. business with them, but I'm not their target mate. Well, I think that I would be a, a lawyer or an accountant's target market, but sure. if you know, your target market is young people or, or your whole goal is just to entertain people. Um, maybe you're getting, you know, sponsorships or uh, whatever, then go for it. But what is yeah. your own objective? Why, why do you want to look silly on a video? Like, what are you trying to achieve? Right. I, but to each their own, right? <laughs> I suppose. I, suppose. I, don't, I don't really care because I don't have TikTok. I don't have any of those platforms. I've never been right. on them. Uh, so I could care less what anybody's doing on them. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm with you. I just, I, um, this is one of the things I like about LinkedIn is, is that when I go there and I look through the feed, uh, I'm not seeing pictures of people's food. I mean, they're probably, but it's probably out there, but at least LinkedIn is um, going, yeah, Scott doesn't care about that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I look at the, what are the, what's the academic research that's going on? What are the, what are the uh, financial trends that I need to be concerned about? What, what what are the things that are important? And the algorithms, I'll say, are doing pretty good to uh, deliver those things that are important to me based on what I where I interact, where my active listening has been. What have I commented on? What have I liked? Uh, what groups do I follow? Well, we all use these different platforms for different purposes, right? So, you know, Facebook, for example, I don't mind seeing the odd uh, food picture on Facebook. Sure. Uh, especially if there's a recipe accompanying it. And I'm like, oh, this <laughs> recipe, you know, and I will save them sometimes. On Twitter, uh, I'm never going to get used to calling it X. Um, I'm with you. you know, I was, I had one purpose for using it, and that was news. And now they're, they, it, they've pretty much destroyed that end of it. So I'm like, well, I have no reason mm -hmm. to do it anymore. But LinkedIn is never going to change. The reason and the goal is business. Yep. And unless you're, uh, retiring and have no interest in maintaining your professional network post retirement, mm -hmm. um, everybody's going to continue using it. Yeah, and and uh, one of the things that you did, and and we'll we'll start to wind down here is is when you actually went to your LinkedIn community, and uh, and I think I'll call it community rather than a network because these are the relationships; these uh, uh, are people that you're connected with. You asked for input on the cover design of your book. Yeah. And that yeah. was a pretty active conversation. Yes, it was. Yeah. And it was fantastic because um, I incorporated much of the feedback that I received, you know, so it was, yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> and I think you came up with a great, a great design because it went with what your market was interested in. True, exactly. And so, and so it's a, I'll say, it's a very business-like cover, which I appreciate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you yes. know, um, yeah. but, and I will say too that that uh, I know people get, uh, they'll write upset posts about uh, people who are trying to sell them on LinkedIn, but LinkedIn is a business platform. And some yeah. people are just bad at it, but, Come on, it's a business platform, right? It is, and and you know I understand people getting upset with the blatant sales pitches. That of course I right. understand. Um, but if somebody has taken the time to learn how to use LinkedIn effectively mm -hmm. and is building rapport, adding value, um, sparking up conversations, and then they ask to book a call and you're not interested, that's okay. You just say no, I'm not interested. Um, but you don't really feel. Uh, you don't feel offended when somebody has done things the right way. You know, it's just the slimy, uh, oh, we've connected. Let me send you the uh, absolutely untailored, blatant sales pitch. 
uh, trying to, to sell Bank of America uh, small business <laughs> long distance. <laughs> right. <laughs> Do your homework. <laughs> Well, that's a, I, I love that. Do your homework. AI is not going to do the homework for you. Yeah. Uh, it, yes. it may give you some ideas. Yeah, use it for what it is. It's a fantastic tool. But the problem that I'm seeing right now is the, um, the over-reliance and the overconfidence that right. it's bringing and the magic is in the editing. Yeah, you know, I could see uh, using AI and saying, uh, so what are the top five issues that bank managers face? Mm -hmm. And and looking at those and then maybe taking one of them and creating some content on that and going, if, you know, if that's my target market, as bank managers is my, my target market, then I can go, well, look, here's a problem. Uh, what do you think? Here's some potential solutions. But uh, not using, not just throwing it out there. Here's five problems with the banking. <laughs> well, and they all look the same, right? And you know, and if you're trying to use LinkedIn to send messages to people, well, they all start exactly the same. I hope this email finds you well. I hope yes. this message finds you well. I get like I don't know, 25 of these a day now. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. Well, it, it it's <laughs> funny because uh, I go by my middle name, uh, yeah. but I have my. Uh, first initial uh, and a period, right? D. Scott yeah. Smith. Uh, and I also use an unusual title, motivational listener. And you can always tell when you get those automated messages and it says, hello, D period comma. I'm always <laughs> interested in adding more motivational listeners to my network. And I'm like, that's awesome. How many do you have? Because I would love to connect with them as well. <laughs> Uh, it's such a, to me that's just an embarrassment, right? I think, I think that that uh, that is a really good place for us to wrap up, and that's the use of automation mm -hmm. is a hear me now reputation killer. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Period. Full stop. All right. So that's a good that's that is a good thing uh a reputation killer uh automation just don't all right so with that uh melanie how do people get a hold of you where can they find you uh we know that we've got your books right here in uh in the carousel so uh navigating linkedin for sales linkedin unlocked and that is the second edition so it is an updated version so if someone has the old one, definitely get the new one. Uh, if you have a friend uh, that is that's in business, I'm just talking to everybody out here. If you have a friend that's in business, thinking about growing their career, uh, that is telling you they're concerned about the economy, about things that are going on, um, this is a great thing about Amazon. You can buy the book. You can put their address into it uh, and have it show up at their front door within a day, and you're the hero. So that is a fabulous thing. Uh, my shameless plug. I do have my book. Uh, uh, Scientific Method on Business Networking, which uh, will pair well if you if you first get LinkedIn, uh, uh, um, LinkedIn unlocked from Melanie. So how do people do business with you, Melanie? Yeah, so feel free to look me up on LinkedIn. Uh, as well as my website, topdogsocialmedia.com. And uh, yeah, either one or pick up a copy of the books. And there we go. Need, by the way, you don't need both books. It's one or the other. There's no need right. to read both. If you are a salesperson. navigator, it's navigating LinkedIn for sales. If you're not or you're not in sales, it's LinkedIn Unlocked. Fabulous. All right. I want to put this banner up and then we'll uh, I'll send you to the green room. And uh, I'll be there in just a moment with you. Okay. All right. Well, we have been talking with Melanie Dodaro and her two books, LinkedIn for Sales and Navigating LinkedIn for Sales. So if you are a sales professional, if you make your living uh, in business development, in sales, definitely get a copy of this. You can have all the tips, tricks, tools, everything you need. And then LinkedIn Unlocked. That's for us mortals that are out there that are not selling and uh, but need to be prepared. 
So definitely you want to do that. I want to thank Melody for joining us. Melanie, thank you uh, so much. And we will end this stream for today.